I just don't know whether I've got it in me physically or mentally to tackle this job today. It was only a couple of videos ago where I left the dashboard in the Aston Martin looking in this state. Now the reason I've done this is thanks to this little thing right here and this is the passenger side airbag and when you have a crash, which this Aston Martin did, and the passenger airbag deploys, it also breaks the dashboard leaving it like this and unfortunately for me, this is all one piece, it does not separate like the old Aston Martins used to. Which in turn means that to replace that passenger side airbag, I've also got to replace the full dashboard and to replace the full dashboard, I've got to get the thing out. Now replacing any dashboard is never easy but we've done it plenty of times before on other crash damaged cars and it's capable but it just seems that on this Aston Martin it is a lot harder. Now I've undone every bolt that I could find to try and get this thing loose even going to the point of removing the windscreen to see if there was any bolts at the back here and it just seems even though it does feel quite loose it just won't come out it just feels connected at the back along here but yet still there is no bolts along here. So in the end I was stuck and I resorted to calling Aston Martin Nottingham themselves and said why can I not remove this dashboard yet I've undone every bolt I could see and then they said this so that is right, this whole aluminium frame which is built to the dashboard, which weighs 50 kg, has all got to come out together with the wiring loom as well. And that is because all of this dashboard is built outside the car and then hoisted in with a sort of crane when they manufacture it. Now quite obviously I don't have a dashboard crane in my unit, but what I do have is belief. And I believe that we still can remove this dashboard ourselves without having to go to Aston Martin. Now before I start this hell of a job quite ironically we do actually need to go to Aston Martin for the next part that we need so let's go now the part we're collecting from the main dealers was actually cheaper than anywhere else and that's because I couldn't find it anywhere else but before we went inside I was sure to take a look at some of the eye candy outside like this F1 edition Vantage and just look at the color of this Vantage inside the showroom it's awesome of course, I explained to the Aston Martin guys what I was doing. It all comes out as one. So. And before I left, I was sure to get a photo for the Instagram. It's a very rare occasion you see me at main dealers. We've got the goods, and how nice is everyone in there? They're so helpful. And the good thing is, we've actually found we've got a free service with the car. I think the Aston Martins come with four free services with the car, not the actual purchaser of the car. So that means when the car's repaired, we get to go back there for free and have a service. The one thing that I'm actually gonna save a bit of money on, but I'll show you what we've got in here in a minute. Now what's in this box is reasonably priced and highly explosive. It is, of course, a passenger side airbag. Now this is the part that sits underneath the dashboard, but of course, we need to remove the dashboard to get to it. And the airbag cost me 486 pound and 55p. Now I've already bought a steering wheel airbag and this was second hand and this cost me 400 pounds. So with the two airbags, I didn't think it was that badly priced. And that brings the total cost of the build so far to 13,104 pounds and 54p. And that is including all the extra carbon parts that of course I didn't need, but had to buy. So I guess all that's left to do now is for me to get this dashboard out the car. Let's do it. Now before doing this, I did speak to an Aston Martin tech and he mentioned that I have to take the doors off because there's a bolt between the door and the chassis of the car that needs to be removed to take the dash out. There's only one electrical connector to the door and then there's one bolt on the top hinge, one bolt on the bottom hinge, and then there's a hydraulic strut which sits on the hinge to prop the door open. That needs to be removed as well. And I can lift the door off all by myself. A nice and easy job. If only the dash was that easy. Now with the driver's door off, it's time to move to the passenger side door. And you can just see here the bolt. It is just inside this little cutout here. How crazy is that? 
Now, if this hasn't put you off buying crash damaged cars already, you have got to be mad. But there are a lot of cars out there on the road which have been crash damaged and then being sold to a buyer without them knowing any history on the car. But there is a company called Car Vertical that can help with that. Now, Car Vertical works in over 20 different countries and it gathers data from pretty much everywhere to make sure the car that you're buying is as advertised. Now, before I bought the C63 or the Aston Martin or any of my cars, I did check them out using Car Vertical. And let me show you what you should expect. Now, obviously, when I bought the Vantage, it wasn't a shock that I saw on the Car Vertical report that there was an amber light for an accident. I knew it had been crashed. I just wanted to know whether there was anything else that I should know about. But at the top of the report, I can see no mileage fraud was detected. It had not been recorded as stolen and there's no outstanding finance on there. I can see when any ownerships have been changed and when the damage was actually done to the car. And it was in December 2021. I can see here that all the mileage lines up, all of one record of it. And getting down to the bottom of the report, the damage. And the cool thing about this report, I can actually see the photos of the Vantage when it was auctioned off at the car crash auction website so now anyone who buys this car and checks it out using car vertical would be able to see what it looked like before it was fixed and just to show you what a good report looks like here's a report on my e46 m3 all green lights at the top all the mileage all lines up and there's no reports of it being damaged so to check your car a friend's car or a car that you're potentially about to buy click the link in the description box below and with my link you're going to save yourself a nice bit of cash as well back to the dashboard now, I've undone a lot of things from this centre console, which turns out I didn't really need to. The Aston Martin tech mentioned that there was not really much you had to undo from the centre console to remove it. You just have to unplug the loom from underneath the carpet here. So, knowing that, I got straight to it. And would you believe it? The Aston Martin tech was right. It did easily just come out by unplugging that loom there. I didn't need to unplug as much as I did. And here it is outside on the unit floor. But the good thing, I can build this outside the car before putting it back in again. Next thing we need to remove is the steering column. This is actually bolted to the dashboard. As you can see here, there's one black bolt just there, one black bolt just there, and two more which are right underneath with two electrical connectors as well. Then it also connects to the rest of the steering column under the car with this UJ connection. And that's clamped together with one bolt. You can see the steering column that's in the car has got splines on it and they slot into the UJ. And just to be safe, I'm going to mark it with a black pen just to make sure I'll put it back in the exact same position. Although there might be a cutout on the ridge so that you can't put it in any other way. But I'm not going to take that risk this time. And now I can struggle back out the footwell and begin undoing the bolts at the top half of the column. Just two more electrical connectors and then the steering column is removed from the dashboard. Now I noticed when I removed the steering column, there was a sort of hose which goes from the inside of the car to the outside of the car. You can just see the 10 mil bolt here. I thought this may be connected to the dashboard as well. So I begin to wrestle with that hose and undo those bolts as well. Time to start labeling the postage bags because we're about to begin undoing the bolts for the aluminium frame which holds it to the actual chassis of the car. According to that Aston Martin documentary that I watched, there's like 33 bolts which hold it to the car, I believe. So it's just a case of finding every single bolt, not forgetting the ones which are inside the door. Now, if you're new to the channel and you've just came here by watching this video, I'd like to explain that I'm not a mechanic and all of this has been self-taught. So if I manage to get this dashboard out and put it back in, the least you guys could do to show your support is click that subscribe button down below. <laughs> So we've made some progress, but not quite enough yet. The dashboard now, it does actually move all together. But yet again, still, it seems like there's more stuff at the back which is connecting it. Now there's two more bolts which I've just spotted down here, which could actually be the final bolts, but let's see. Not quite, but I do think I know where the answer is. 
Now we know when the dashboard comes out, it comes out with pretty much everything attached to the dash, including all the heater blowers and the heater matrix and everything like that. Now for your blowers to blow hot air into the engine, it uses the coolant. And obviously the coolant is warm because it's circulating through the engine. That's why if you start your car in the morning and put the heaters on, they won't be hot because the coolant has not gone up to temperature. So this means in the engine bay, there must be a coolant feed and a coolant return going from the engine into the heater core inside the car. Which unluckily for me, looks like it's gonna be behind this engine. So we've gotta take all this bracing off and this heat shield off just to see if we can find those two coolant parts which go into the actual cabin. And I've also noticed that just here, there is one bolt there, one bolt there, which look like they could be for the dashboard. And then looking over here, there's a similar sort of um, bolts on the back side of it there. So potentially that's four more bolts that we need to undo to get the dashboard out. But first off, let's get that sort of heater matrix coolant pipe things off. <laughs> let's do it. So with the strut brace removed and the heat shield undone, you can just see behind the engine here, the two coolant pipes which go in alongside the AC pipes as well. The AC pipes are held in with two 10mm bolts, but the coolant pipes are held in by two sort of spring-loaded clips, which was so difficult to get to. I've managed to remove the two 10 mils for the AC pipe, but those coolant pipes just were not coming out. So I traced them back to where they were leading to in the engine bay and disconnected them from there, which was easy enough. They were just on a little C-clip and then I could pull them off the connection. And then the other one ran right behind the engine and came out on the right hand side. Now, in a fashion, I think we are about ready to come out. I've got whatever this pipe here is for, not quite sure, something to do with some, I think air just runs down there. And then we've got two coolant lines there. And then the aircon pipes are disconnected at the back. And if you've noticed, the dashboard is now pulled away from the actual firewall of the car. What an absolute marathon this has been to get this dash out. But I think we are... Yeah, I think that is about ready to come out, but it is 50 kg and I'm definitely not gonna be able to lift this out by myself. So I called in some friends. You forget a lot of bench like 120s, you know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, can you move, can you go backwards? Sure can. Back it up. Uh, no, we can't. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, what's connected? Now, even though I thought I'd undone everything, there was still a few electrical connectors to undo. Oh, it's just this big fat loom here. You ready, Chris? Yeah, now I can take this dash out. Yeah. Right, transfer over to you. I got it. You got it. Oh wow. Watch that tripod, Chris. Yeah, I love you, Know what you're like. Oh, <laughs> tripod. Oh, right. Self filming. Okay. Right. Oh, no, no, he's calling it. There we go. Yes! And the dashboard is out of the car. It's been a mini journey tackling this dashboard in the Vantage and it was much harder than I originally thought, but now it is out. Little did I know when I first removed the airbag from the steering wheel, what type of mission I was getting myself into. But along this little journey, we have learned so much. Things like Aston Martin use parts from Citroen and Peugeot. And to remove the dashboard, it has to come out all as one. Now, I would say that was fun, but I'd be lying. But we have learned a lot so far with the Aston. Now, normally, when you take a dashboard out, you're left with a big, wiry mess 
inside the car when actually this time it is really clean and just empty in here. You can see here the hole into um, the actual engine bay and this is where the two aircon pipes that was fiddling around in the engine bay to try and undo. They were on 10 mils. They are going to be an absolute nightmare to get back from the other side. We also have the hose here which we undid and that seems like it's the heater for the windscreen. We've got two coolant hoses which go through there which are still on the back of that big lump of a dashboard but other than that it's pretty clean in here and well, fingers crossed, it shouldn't be too bad to put back in. And there is some good news about the dashboard being all in one piece and outside the car. And that is we can assemble this all together before it goes back in, just like they do on the assembly line when they build these Aston Martins. So all this center console, I didn't need to take out. There's a lot of stuff here which I've taken out which I didn't need to. All I need to be able to access is the main bolts which are on the side and the side there as well. And then I could just plug in the main wiring looms which are all this when we plug it all back in. Everything else didn't actually need to come out, but well, you live and you learn. I would have never have known that until I've done one. So now, let me tell you the plan with this. Now, the whole reason we're doing this is because of this baby here, and we need to get the whole leather top off the aluminium frame, and it is so close to coming off. I think there's just a few more bolts at the back. I'm actually just gonna have a hack at that now. At this point, I don't know whether I'm surprised, shocked, angry. Do you know what? It's not even a surprise anymore. There was literally only four bolts connecting this lever piece to the actual aluminium frame of the dashboard. And those four were, where are they? There was one, two there, and three, four there. That was literally it. If Aston Martin have just made those into clips and not bolts, then we could have just taken this whole lever section off without having to take all this out as well. That It's absolutely mental. It, it just doesn't seem right. But I can see now why, well, if an Aston Martin has had a crash and the airbags are deployed, well, it's as good as a write-off. I dread to think how many hours Aston Martin would charge to actually take that out. It's a serious amount of labor. And well, I haven't even got to the point of putting it all back in. I admit it will be a lot quicker if you knew what you were doing, but still, it's not a five minute job. But now we have the piece that we actually need of the dashboard, the leather part of it. And with it being disconnected from the aluminium, we can access the airbag from underneath, unbolt that and put a new airbag in. But that doesn't solve the issue with a break in the lever. And we have a few options with this. Now my first option, which was always the original option, was to get the dashboard re-trimmed. Because we couldn't find a new dashboard to put in, we can't just do a swap and replacement of it. We was gonna get this section actually repaired and then all the leather re-trimmed over the top. Now this has to be professionally done and obviously it can't be done by any Jack, Jill or Harry because, well, this section right here is all to do with safety and if you glue this down too hard, it doesn't have a weak spot anymore and if the airbag was to deploy and it wouldn't deploy correctly, then you're sort of putting whoever's sitting in the passenger in danger so this needs to be sort of fixed back but to the point where if an airbag was to blow out it would blow out correctly which you can imagine being quite difficult now the next downside to repairing the dash as opposed to replacing it is the lever we're never actually going to get that pure Aston Martin lever that they use from factory at least I don't think they could so the trim shop would use lever as close as possible to the Aston Martin lever and they'll probably do both sides just to avoid any mismatches but again it's not going to be exact Aston Martin lever and if it doesn't match the interior it's going to really bug me and the only other option we have of that is doing something custom maybe an Alcantara dash but that means we'd have to change stuff on the inside to match the Alcantara dashboard but I don't know but that could be a lost cause but there is another option. Now I've stumbled across this on eBay and this is the leather top piece of a dashboard, not for Advantage, but for a DB11 2017 model. And although the dashboards are different, they do have different fascias on, the actual leather part, it looks pretty much identical to the Vantage. If you look, even all the fixtures, the fittings and the holes are exactly the same as they are on the Vantage dashboard. And I don't know about you, but it would seem absolutely mental if Aston Martin were to make a dashboard which looks so similar, but not the same. I mean, it would just make more sense to do a completely different style dashboard. It just seems 
too much of a coincidence that it looks pretty much identical to the Vantage dashboard. I know they do have different fascias on there, but maybe they all have the same sort of fixings. I don't know, but I think it could be worth a shot. Does the DB11 top leather part of the dashboard fit exactly the same as the Vantage? I guess we'll have to wait for the next video to find out. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Oh, what's the windscreen? <laughs>